Bystander. So Isoria is queen. Kenny is dead. Rob Rice is gone. Thank God. She looks older. Two months. She would be good to run an orphanage, right? Because of her past. Goddess Krista. <laughs> the way he said that. Interesting. Interesting. It's great that Historia can actually use her background to do some good. And I love that they threw Levi in there too. Levi would relate to that and he would want that, right? I guess his childhood does have things in common with Historia's. Kenny maybe seems like a better parental figure than Historia's mom, as crazy as that is. But yeah, they're both warm-hearted people who didn't really get that at all. So this feels good, but it also feels like the calm before the storm in a way. The race tradition has come to an end, but this place still exists and this place is not natural and it exists for a reason and there are other threats and monkey is coming, right? All these things. They look so adult. Some more time for training. Yeah, I wonder if he's changed at all. Not in this way. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great. No, no, everyone's too happy. She didn't say that, yeah. Oh? <laughs> that face. <laughs> um, jealous? Nice, setting traps. <laughs> Her excitement. Pretty good. This does feel like a huge turning point. That actually is huge. That's amazing. I mean, she deserves this. It's really interesting to watch Eren this season. I mean, he's obviously still Eren, right? Like, he's the Eren that I've come to know and... And no. But with all these revelations, he's starting to question himself, which I think is a good start. Especially since the more I think about it, the less clear I am on what is actually Eren and what are things he's inherited from his Titan predecessors. But my feeling about this whole change is that there would have to be something that he focuses on that is actually meaningful and, and like healthy. To that extent, this is one of the best things that he could he could be doing. Like he does have this tremendous drive, right? To be putting that to use in service of the scouts and humanity in a way that's protective, that feels really good to me. It feels good to me that Aaron is actually helping fix holes in the walls and make traps for Titans and things like that. I guess what still concerns me for Aaron is what happens when things aren't going well. It's amazing how far we've come in this show. In hindsight, I really love that conversation they had a few episodes ago where Armin sort of showed Aaron that humanity is building very slowly. They are where they looked up to as kids, but now humanity is farther ahead. And this is a great representation of that, this episode so far. Like, look how far they've come. And so Aaron can lean on that right now and that softens some of his darker traits. But it's really easy to be virtuous and to stay true to your vision and to stick to your ideals when things are going well, right? Who are you when things fall apart? And for Aaron, I feel there's a very, very strong possibility of like complete reversion. Yeah, the tide is shifting, right? This is momentum. He's actually making a difference, which is his goal. <laughs> Are they? Well, that went well. <laughs> Interesting. We've seen that Hitch, I guess somewhat surprisingly, is just as principled as, as Marlo is. She's just Marlo's Mikasa, I guess. I also, I love how Aaron's like, yeah, I agree. She is an idiot. <laughs> Always the nuanced thinker, our Aaron. I mean, he kind of is. Yeah, he survived the scouts for over two months, which puts him in the 99th percentile. Yeah, yeah. They've grown physically and mentally and emotionally. They've seen some stuff. You can't touch them. 
They're the senpais now. Let's not go back there again. Everything worked out so well the first time. Why risk it? Damn it. <laughs> I can't even... <laughs> it's so out in the open now. Eren! <laughs> Damn, she really is mommy. Seems like he's taking taking to it a little bit more now. So Aaron's been very open with them about what happened and his memories. So that guy might have answers. Ooh. <laughs> he would do it. That was him? I think I knew this already somehow, but that was Erwin's commander in No Regrets. He was the one who gave the mother her son's arm, and he knows Eren's father, so finding him might provide some answers. As a side note, I kind of love the, the subtle interactions, or maybe not so subtle, between Jean and Eren. Like, you can tell that even though they're in conflict, the relationship has shifted towards... Love may be too strong a word, but something positive, let's say. What that felt like to me was that John John actually respects Eren quite a bit and wants him to go back to his annoying self. Because on some level, he he drew energy from that or he drew inspiration from that. Which is kind of nice, you know, because if you have a rival, that rivalry does something great for you. The person being someone worthy of rivalry is inspiration in itself. And so it kind of hurts if they fall. Like, I get that feeling. And I think some qualities Eren has that John John appreciates, partly because he, he maybe has more difficulty with them, are conviction, passion, single-mindedness. John John is sort of more more questioning of himself and what he believes and things like that. Aaron, at least in the past, seems so self-assured. And even though, in my opinion, that has a lot of harmful effects, there is something really cool about that as well. Oh yeah, they have history. I know, it's been a really short time, amazingly. You've known this whole time? <laughs> Secrets and lies. Bystander. Yeah, he was wandering around as a titan, maybe? Young Hannes. <laughs> Hannes was a good guy. I miss him. Wait, he's an outsider. Is he from the land of canned foods? Yeah, but the so I don't quite know what to make of that chosen one remark, but it does seem like there's a sort of split in terms of the way people think and the rationale about the world. There are those who are content with living in blissful ignorance, and there are those who are never going to be satisfied, because they're always going to be thinking about what else is out there, or feeling trapped, or feeling not free. And this is something that's been set up very, very early on, like from the first couple episodes. And I can't really explain it, but it feels like this is really calling attention to that, and it might be more than just a simple thought. This is not a case of just simple curiosity. <laughs> Ambitious. Judgmental. Carla? That's who you want to acknowledge you? Does this make them rivals? Uh oh. Everything's coming up, Grisha. <laughs> and not Shadis. Oh, there you go. Oof, this is getting dark. He got what he wanted. Except not really. Oof. There's baby Aaron, he's so cute. Oh, 
kiss them. Ugh, ugh, this hurts. Yeah, Shadow's really letting it all out there. I get it though. It's really difficult when you yourself have developed a certain worldview or set of values and you're so convinced of that. But not only does the world not share it, but you end up maybe getting punished for it. Or your perception is that you're punished for it. It seems like Shadis aspired to be something like a heroic figure. You know, someone who would do great things and lead humanity out of darkness or lead humanity out of ignorance or whatever. Yet, he gets the opposite. That kind of thing is going to drive you crazy when you think of yourself as a good person or you think of yourself embodied all these values, but other people who do not embody those values seem to be doing better than you. Unfortunately, that's a natural recipe for envy and hatred. Like, it's really easy to get cynical. Like, people are so stupid. When will these people wake up and realize the truth? I feel like that's a very, very common sentiment, but I feel like that's a mistake. There's an arrogance to that. There's a disconnectedness to reality about that, and it leads nowhere good. It just leads to bitterness. I think part of it is that it contains a judgment. It contains a judgment about people's worth based on who they are and what they're doing. When, if you're really purely connected to your own goals, it doesn't really matter what other people are doing. Like, the Thing you're doing is, is a reward in itself. And I think the, the pain might suggest that there are other less pure motives in there, like looking for approval, looking for attention, wanting status, things like that. Carla is doing nothing wrong by living her life in the walls and having a family. You know, a lot of that was just jealousy that came out. Dr. Yeager is doing his part to help out. He's not a scout, but he doesn't need to be. I guess in many ways, the being a chosen one thing was sort of a setup. Elvin, and that's how Erwin became the leader. I don't think that was the message, but okay. No, 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 no. Man, he's just spiraling downwards real fast. And that's how Eren mysteriously got the key. Maybe I'm missing something, but it's not binary in that way, right? It's not like there's special people by virtue of birth and non-special people. I think if you're at that point where you're trying to think of it that way, you've already gone wrong. For me, these classifications, these assumptions that there are qualities that are just intrinsic to our being throughout our lives, for both positive and negative, is way more harmful than it is helpful. You know, like on the positive end, thinking of yourself as special or smart or kind, you know, those create pitfalls because now you've disconnected self-identity from from behavior and results, which I think is the more important thing. And on the negative side, thinking of yourself as stupid or a bad person or whatever it is, robs you of the chance to actually do good things. It's the moment to moment of your life that matters way more than the, the labels, you know? The labels are meaningless. We are only what we are in any given moment. Funnily enough, I think the people we actually would consider great would never bother thinking about things in those terms. Erwin is not thinking about how, how great he is or if he's a chosen one, right? Erwin is just solving problems. He's just seeing things in front of him and doing his best, and that's enough. Hanji is incredibly intelligent, but her focus isn't her intelligence. It's her interest in science, right? Dr. Yeager wasn't thinking of himself as a kind person. He was just doing medicine. I think Shadis and Eren have some of this darkness in common where it's not just them doing what they think is right. It's a personal attachment to being a certain kind of person or maybe being viewed a certain way. And that just colors things differently. It contains a judgmentalness about the world and others, which to me is extremely limiting. As tempting as it is, I feel like we almost always go wrong when we try to be reductionist about people. You know, good, bad, smart, dumb, special people, common people, whatever. It doesn't allow for the full range. It doesn't allow for the humility that invites learning, you know? There's just so much wrong with it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being Carla. Yeah. He was very cute. I'll give it to you, Carla. He was a cute kid. It was it was him this whole time? Whoa. <laughs> I went through so many different theories of, of who it was. Oh, uh, he just he digs digging his own hole just deeper and deeper. And you know what? He just has himself to blame for that, honestly, in my opinion. You did it to yourself, Shadis. That was a very interesting episode. I probably missed a whole bunch of plot stuff, but for me, it wasn't really that new. It didn't really offer that much that was new plot-wise. We knew that Grisha took Eren and made him the Titan and all that stuff. I had already sort of worked out the timing of events, but it was a very interesting character study of, Sh of Shadis. And through Shadis, there's some really cool stuff happening here about like your place in the world and motivations for doing things and arrogance and all this, all this really great stuff. And I feel like in some way, he serves as sort of a warning for Eren, although that might not be the right word for it. He presents a danger of humanity. And I 
I think that danger exists more broadly than just him. It's connected to judgments about people, like Aaron's judgment about people inside the walls this whole time as being sheep or whatever. And maybe also connected to the idea of those in the know and those not in the know, the race family and the, the commoners who don't deserve the truth. I actually think it's a really common thing. You know, I think it's insecurity masquerading as superiority. Becoming a great person is really difficult. It requires a lot of self-sacrifice in terms of action and thought and being able to be self-analytical and self-critical, being able to work to grow. So there's always an incentive to create a, a somewhat fictional mental world that puts you at the top of it. And the common tools of this are finding a trait, you know, finding a trait you can attribute to yourself, deeming that as superior, and then seeing other people as now beneath you. And you see this all the time, right? Like pretty much anybody who has an opinion about something, who has a very strong opinion about something, on some level feels that people who don't share that opinion are stupid. But the people on the other side also feel that way. So that feeling itself is not sufficient proof of that. In fact, what it suggests to me is that those two people, even though they're on opposite sides ideologically, are doing the same thing and are therefore actually very similar and probably on a, on a similar level if we're creating levels. Not only do I think that's pragmatically wrong because it, it creates bitterness and hatred and like a closing in of oneself to stick to this identity of being right or being smart or whatever it may be. There's also just so much farther to go as a person. I think although we often talk about things in these terms, you know, like someone being smart or someone being great or someone being special, for me, a more workable solution is to acknowledge that there is something special about humanity, right? Like there is something special about Aaron just by virtue of his birth. Humans have a tremendous amount of potential. But the other half of that is you then have to do your best to meet that potential. And we are never one static quality. If I think of myself as a good person, that then becomes something I have to protect. And it's possible that things go well and then I try to do good things, but I feel like what is equally likely or maybe more likely is I just shut out evidence of anything I did wrong so I can continue thinking I'm a good person. What's more important is not that perception or that label, but just doing good. And that's a moment to moment thing. I've never made it as a good person. You know, I'm always one step away from doing something terrible. Similarly, if I think of myself as smart, that's an inhibitor because if I'm already smart, then I have to defend my intelligence all the time and I can't really listen. I can't be humble. I'm gonna get angry when people challenge my beliefs because they're challenging my identity as being smart. And so I'm lost. The label is total fiction. It's what I do that's real. Yet it's so easy to get attached to that. It's way more difficult to actually live openly and freely and to let go of those those identifiers both for for oneself and for others to forgive other people's mistakes to let other people be where they are to not be judgmental just to do one's own best and hope that other people do the same so yeah very interesting to me thematically i'm gonna try to keep an eye on this because i feel like this is not accidental it's not a one-off thing this is a, a broader theme that's building it's a thing that exists in Aaron. it's a thing that exists in society at large maybe so we'll just have to see but yeah so that's the end of this episode i'll see you guys next time for what i guess is the finale or the mid-season finale right